Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This lecture video is on Introduction to Project Scope Management. From the 10 Project Management Knowledge, knowledge Areas in PMBOK Guide, this lecture video is on Project Scope Management Knowledge Area. The Project Scope Management involves defining and controlling the deliverables from the project. It contains six major processes. This video will focus on processes 3, 4, 5, and 6 with an emphasis on the scope statement and the work breakdown structure. Three key documents at the beginning of a project is the project charter that initiates the project, the scope statement that defines the project, and the WBS work breakdown structure that identifies the work. Let's start with a project scope statement. The project scope statement defines the project and establishes the limits of the project. In developing a scope statement, the project manager must create a balance between the key stakeholders and the stakeholder meetings and the project team and the team meetings. In the stakeholder meetings considered high scope level, the focus on success of the project. In the team meetings considered a functional scope level, the focus is on feasibility. Along with balance, the project manager must also maintain a perspective. At the high scope level, the perspective of success should not drift to feasibility. At the functional scope level, the perspective of feasibility should not be distracted by considering the overall success of a project. If the perspectives for both levels are not maintained, then the meetings will usually be ineffective. But creating a balance and maintaining a perspective provide a basis for a strong scope statement. The objectives of the scope statement in defining the project are the deliverables and the solution to obtain those deliverables. And that goes right into the WBS, the work breakdown structure, and that is called the in scope part of the scope statement. But the scope statement also defines the out of scope items, which coordinates with the integrated change control. The in scope and out of scope establishes the project limit, for the in scope can contain the background justification approach deliverables approval, and the out of scope can contain the out of scope register, which lists the items that are not in scope, along with the cost, time, resource requirements for each item and the integrated change control, which will establish how the out-of-scope items will be managed during a project. Key elements of project scope statement. Always document, begin communications early, and include key stakeholders from the beginning. Handle the high scope level and functional scope level issues appropriately. And maintain a project focus. Now let's look at the create work breakdown structure. The WBS identifies the work to be done in a structured manner suitable for establishing management responsibilities, generating knowledge area plans, or assigning work. The WBS identifies the work to be done in the project, or if it's not here, it's not part of the project. And if it's part of the project, it's going to be in the work breakdown structure. There are two types of structure forms, hierarchical and outline. And the decomposition in each one starts with project title and then it moves to deliverables and finally work packages. The standard identifiers are code of accounts and they're used to track work, time, and cost. The different approaches we'll cover in class and the deliverables of the work breakdown structure and the WBS dictionary. The suggested hierarchical decomposition of the WBS starts with a project, which I start with level zero, and that's the complete project. And then you have the major deliverables, which is level one, the deliverable. Level two are sub-deliverables, supporting deliverables, and there could be a number of levels here. And eventually you'll have your lowest management responsibility level. You have cost accounting, which is grouping of work packages for monitoring progress and responsibility. And then work packages, which is the smallest identifiable work activities in the WBS. Lower levels of the WBS can be designed to coordinate with critical project areas such as schedule, cost baseline, quality, human resource assignments, communication plan, risk response plan, procurement plan. So let's consider an example of a WBS. We've received this memo. We have been asked to respond to an RFP request for a proposal. We will receive the RFP next week and begin the project. Tomorrow we will meet to create a project plan that will include a scope statement, WBS, schedule, and cost baseline. For our meeting tomorrow, bring your laptop with the following WBS outline 
on our software for discussion and plan development. See you then. So using this decomposition, we have zero, the project, which is the RFP response. And then level one is the deliverable, which is initialize, work, and closure. And then the level two would be one, 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 two. These are our second level. And since this is the lowest level, that would be our level of management responsibility. It would also be our work package. This is outline form. We could also express it in hierarchical form, where here's our major deliverables, and here's our sub-deliverables, which is going to be our management responsibilities and our work packages. Let's look at validate scope. In the scope validation process, the project manager will periodically in have an inspection of the scope, which can include an audit, analysis, a report to the stakeholder through a communication plan. And the stakeholder goes through a validation process where they, if they accept the scope, then it's documented. If they reject, it goes through change management. They verif verify the change, and it goes back to the stakeholder, and the process is repeated. The value of scope validation is prevent scope creep, deviating from the scope in this charter and the scope statement, stakeholder communications, where the stakeholders are aware of what's happening and the changes that are being made, and team motivation, where the team knows that the project is proceeding to completion. Let's look at control scope. Control scope in the scope management plan includes identification, acceptance, and implementation. Identification, procedure for submission, evaluation, and selection of changes, and that coordinates with the integrated change control. Acceptance, decision process for acceptance or rejection of changes. Again, coordinating with the integrated change control, and implementation, configuration management, which includes change management, did the change happen, and configuration management, if the change did happen, did it cause problems elsewhere. And all of these are coordinated with the integrated change control. The scope management process starts with the scope statement, the work breakdown structure, and the WBS dictionary, which creates a scope baseline. But if change happens, you identify the change, accept it, and if it's implemented, then you create a new scope baseline. So the old scope baseline becomes a new scope baseline, and that needs to be communicated with the team members, and that becomes a new scope baseline for the project. Key characteristic and scope change control. Identification. Respect for detail. If change is not detailed enough, it could be left open for interpretation and cause confusion. But if change is too detailed, it could be difficult for implementation and cause delays. Motivated by consequences. Identification of changes should include the determination of consequences that are positive for the project. Acceptance. Process as important as change. And often the process is even more important as the change. The process of what are the changes, how are they made, when are they made, and communicating the changes is often more important than the change itself. Implementation. Always communicate to everyone from the beginning to the end and remain flexible. Because no matter what the change is, good people can make the change work. That ends the lecture video on Introduction to Project Scope Management. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.